Also today, the Holy Father honored Our Lady with a quiet moment in Rome. Pope Francis went to the city center for a private act of veneration. Because of the coronavirus pandemic, he did not hold his traditional ceremony. The Holy Father asked Our Lady for the miracle of a cure for the many sick and suffering people around the world. Joining us now from Rome is Father Diego Saez, Postulator General of the Missionary Oblates of Mary Immaculate. Father, thank you so much for your time today. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, for those who may not be familiar, what is the Immaculate Conception? And also, how long has it been a feast day in the Church? The Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary is uh, the feast that, uh, that celebrates that she, Our Lady, was conceived without original sin. Uh, all of us, we came to this world with the original sin. We have to be baptized uh, for have this sin to be removed. And we celebrate that the Virgin Mary was uh, uh, conceived without this sin. So uh, from the beginning, he was free from the sin. And uh, this feast is so ancient in the church. For instance, I came from Spain in my country. We started to celebrate this festivity uh, in the seventh century. 7th century, I think it was in 632 when they started to celebrate this feast, and then they, it is spread to the other countries of the uh, Catholic Church. It was officially proclaimed as a dogma of faith only in 1854. Uh, but uh, the belief in the uh, Immaculate Conception of Our Lady was prior to, to this uh, moment of the proclamation of the dogma. As I told you, many theologians and bishops throughout the ages, throughout the centuries, they discussed about it. And finally, the Pope, the Holy Father, uh, came to the conclusion, to the idea that this has to be considered by all Catholics as one of the truths of our faith. And, Father, can you talk about how the Immaculate Conception is still relevant today? When we look at our life and when we look at the world, uh, we so often notice what it is wrong in our lives and what it is wrong in, uh, in the world. Sometimes uh, some kind of feeling of the discouragement can came to us. No, I cannot, I cannot change my life. I cannot change the world. So to have the immaculate conception of Our Lady in front of our eyes, it allows us to see the, the end that is waiting for all of us. At the end, the uh, God will prevail over the sin and over what it is bad and wrong in this world. So it is some kind of encouragement. God gave us the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary to announce to all of us what is uh, our destiny, the destiny of each one of us and the destiny of the world. In the Immaculate Conception of the Mary, we can see a sign of the victory of our Lord on what is wrong in our world and in our lives. And Father, another thing I want to talk about is your order, which is, of course is dedicated to the Blessed Virgin. Can you tell us a little bit more about your order and also the work that you all do? Our order is dedicated to the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary because uh, our mission is to proclaim the gospel and the salvation, especially to those who are most abandoned, who are far from God, who are far from the Church. We look for those groups of people that are more in need of this uh, uh, message of salvation. And we have the Immaculate uh, Virgin Mary as the symbol and the image of our own mission to proclaim the final victory of the Lord uh, over the sin and over what it is wrong in, in the world. Indeed. Well, Father, thank you so much for your time in speaking with us. We truly appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, too.